Hello, my name is Wu Nguyen. I am currently an assistant professor of medicine in the Division of Gastroenterology at University Hospital in Cleveland. I'll be talking about my recent manuscript in GIE titled The Role Through the Scope Catheter Based Endoscopic Ultrasound in Inflammatory Bowel Disease Diagnosis and Activity Assessment. It is estimated that over 1.5 million patients in this country have inflammatory bowel disease or IBD. IBD consists of two major subtypes, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis or UC. Currently, Crohn's disease and UC are diagnosed based on a combination of characteristic findings on endoscopy, histology, and or imaging. However, distinguishing Crohn's disease and UC when the disease is limited to the colon can be challenging. In fact, 5 to 15% of patients with IBD carry IBD unclassified diagnosis meaning these patients cannot be classified as Crohn's disease or UC. This is a potential barrier to optimal patient care since disease prognosis, complications, and treatment approach differ significantly for Crohn's disease versus UC. In this study, we will evaluate the role of endoscopic ultrasound in differentiating the diagnosis of Crohn's disease from UC and healthy controls. It has been well described on surgical pathology that Crohn's disease is characterized by transmural inflammation, while UC involves inflammation of the superficial layer, primarily involving only the mucosa. Endoscopic ultrasound allows the endoscopist to visualize deep layers in the gastrointestinal wall and has an important role in the management of pancreatic disease and gastrointestinal tumors. However, its role in IBD management is understudied. In this study, we hypothesized that the endoscopic ultrasound's ability to evaluate superficial versus deep layers of the colon wall can be leveraged to diagnose Crohn's disease versus UC and assess for transmural disease activity. This was a prospective study performed at Virginia Tech Crohn Clinic, an academic center where I previously worked. This study was funded by the Clinical Research Award from the American College of Gastroenterology. A total of 60 patients undergoing colonoscopy from 2019 to 2021 for screening, surveillance, or diagnostic reasons for gastrointestinal symptoms were recruited to participate in the study. 20 of these patients had well-established Crohn's disease with at least colonic involvement, 20 with UC, and 20 were controls. All patients were age 18 or older, Half of the patients with Crohn's disease, or UC, had endoscopically active inflammation, while the other half had inactive disease. Active or inactive endoscopic disease activity was determined using the standard Simple Endoscopic Score, or SESCD score, for Crohn's disease and the Mayo Endoscopic Subscore for UC. All patients were older than 18, patients with IBD unclassified diagnosis, history of colon surgery, but other infectious or inflammatory causes of colitis were excluded. At the time of the colonoscopy, patient will undergo measurements of colon bowel wall thickness using the Olympus Mini Probe Ultrasound Device, UM3R3. This is an FDA-approved through-the-scope catheter-based ultrasound device that has a diameter of 2.5 millimeter and a length of approximately 2 meters and can be passed through the biopsy channel of all Olympus 180 or 190 colonoscope. The probe has a piezoelectric crystal at the distal tip, while the proximal end is attached to a driver unit that causes the crystal to spin and vibrate, creating a radio ultrasound image at high frequency of 20 MHz. During colonoscope insertion, air was suctioned out and the colon was infused with water. The mini probe ultrasound was inserted into the biopsy channel and bowel wall thickness, specifically the thickness of the mucosa, submucosa, muscularis propria, and the total wall layer were measured and obtained from the rectum, which is the primary site, and then the cecum. In patients with active inflammations or ulcerations in the colon, the measurements were obtained at the site of the most severe inflammation in the rectum and the cecum. All measurements were obtained at the time of colonic relaxation, or rather, during the absence of colonic contraction. The rest of the colonoscopy exam was conducted per standard protocol. We found that patients with active Crohn's disease had significantly thicker rectal mucosa, 
submucosa, muscular aspropria, and total wall layer compared to controls. Patient with active UC has significantly thicker rectal mucosa and the total wall layer, but no significant difference in submucosa or muscular aspropria layer thickness compared to control. Importantly, patients with active Crohn's disease had a significantly thicker rectal submucosa thickness compared to patients with UC. Compared to patients with inactive Crohn's disease, patients with active Crohn's disease had significantly thicker total wall layer and also thicker mucosa, submucosa, and muscular aspropria layer. Compared to patients with inactive UC, the patient with active UC has significantly thicker mucosa and total wall layers compared to Patients with inactive Crohn's disease have thicker rectal submucosa compared to controls, while all other layers are similar to controls. Patients with inactive UC have similar thickness in all rectal wall layers compared to controls. Similar findings were found for the sequel wall layer thickness. We perform a receiving operating curve analysis and the optimal cutoff point for differentiating active Crohn's disease versus inactive Crohn's disease in our cohort was a rectal submucosal thickness value of 1.1 millimeter. And for differentiating active UC versus inactive UC was rectal mucosa thickness value of 1.1 millimeter. Similarly, a rectal submucosa thickness value of 1.1 millimeter is an optimal cutoff point for distinguishing active Crohn's disease from active UC in this cohort. In summary, our study showed that patients with active Crohn's disease have significantly thicker colon total wall layer that is primarily due to thicker submucosa layer compared to controls and patients with inactive Crohn's disease. Meanwhile, patients with active UC have significantly thicker colon total wall layer that's primarily due to a thicker mucosa layer compared to controls and inactive UC. Patients with active Crohn's disease have significantly thicker submucosal layer compared to patients with active UC. This study demonstrates a novel application of endoscopic ultrasound and its utility in diagnosing Crohn's disease versus UC and in evaluating transmural disease activity. The ability to differentiate active Crohn's disease from active UC by evaluating mucosa and submucosa wall layer thickness at the time of colonoscopy may help confirm inflammatory bowel disease subtype diagnosis and perhaps recharacterize patients with IBD unclassified diagnosis. This will need to be tested in future studies. Furthermore, the ability of the endoscopic ultrasound to evaluate for transmural healing in patients with inflammatory bowel disease at the time of colonoscopy, and how this can be used to predict disease outcomes will need to be further evaluated. Thank you.